Hi, and welcome back to the day two afternoon session, if you're in the east coast, of the Dice Tower Con 2018 version extravaganza live stream. The oh. only convention coverage with a drop of Redson. Mm. Continue, yeah, Marty. Certs, yeah. right? Certs uh, has a drop of Redson. That's true. Yes. Is, you, that, is that what you're referring to? That it is now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are excited to have as a guest on this segment from Bezier Games, Matt Ryan, who and I had the privilege of meeting and hanging out with Matt earlier this year when Bezier was doing like a tour up and down the East Coast, show, showing off some of the latest games from Bezier Games, including this that's now on the table, Werewolf Legacy, that a lot of people are super excited about. First. Ooh. Matt, welcome. Thank you, thank you. And we cannot wait to hear about this. Oh yes, please tell us all about it. Okay, so what I brought with me today is Ultimate Werewolf Legacy. And so what it does is it takes, um, obviously, Ted and Rob, the two guys who designed the game, are the masters of Legacy and the master of Werewolf. Mm -hmm. uh, you put them together, you're gonna get something kind of awesome. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna change. The village is gonna change. And what the moderator is gonna be using to figure out what's changing and happening is they're gonna use this diary. Um, so there won't be any spoilers, don't worry. Right. Uh, but there's stickers that come out, um, mm -hmm. and they're very discreet stickers. So these are stickers too. You can barely tell they're stickers oh, on wow. the page. They're very uh -huh. high quality, very well done. Um, and then I also tell people you can barely tell that the stickers are on the pages when you play them into the, yeah. into the book as well. Wow. Yeah, isn't that awesome? There's really nice uh, uh, graphic design with that. Yeah, exactly. It's gold on the edges, gold gilded. Um, it's really, really nice. Nice to touch. You can ask it's these padded. guys. And it's uh, yeah, interesting. It's when you first came through, you just had a prototype of this. Yeah, it was empty. It was just an yeah. empty book. So I didn't. We didn't get to see this, and uh, that is, yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, the, the, the quality is like. I mean, it's one of those things that when you're done, you'll want to put it on your shelf. Yeah, yeah it's frameable it, it, almost. Yeah, that, yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, for being such you know, a central component to the game, you guys really did a nice job with the quality of this book. So, and so I assume this is where you're tracking your playthrough. This is where the rules say, I guess if you're familiar with the other legacy style games, it's like with the rule book that you're putting in secret stuff, in this case, it's this really nice like yeah. diary type. Yeah. And the moderator will be using it and it makes it super easy. It's super moderator friendly. So if you've never moderated a game of Werewolf before, there's things in the red text that you read aloud. The things okay. in the black text are for your information. But even if you've never done it, it gives you the ability to be comfortable doing it because all you have to do is be able to read aloud. There you go. Yeah. I've been, I've been able to do that for like weeks now. <laughs> so so uh, how is the book used in conjunction with all the other awesome components I see here? So the, the moderator will have this in front of them and no one else will kind of be see what's going on. But okay. these are going to be the roll cards that people will be using. This is our final artwork. We finally got it in. We're really excited. Um, but different things are going to be happening and different titles are going to come out in the game. Different things are going to occur. So at one point, this beautiful blue box up here is called Pandora's Box. Okay. Um, at one point in the game, you have to decide if you want to open Pandora's Box or not. I mean, it's a hard decision oh, in life. Right. If you're if you're chaotic like me, you always want to open Pandora's Box. <laughs> but my wife would probably never want to open it. So um, it just depends on who you are. And also one of the cool things is you're going to be part of a family. So all these colors share a uh, last name. And you'll see they're all part of a family, mm, and okay. family members can earn different titles. Oh, so Finster happened to, uh, an example in this game, won the mayor title. And so he is uh, he gets a sticker on his um, out of the book. Okay. And now he has the ability to nominate and second a player once per session. So he doesn't need anybody else to second him. He can just nominate and second himself. Wow, because he has that extra political power. Yeah, he's the mayor. He's, he's got all the power. Uh, there's one guy called the Earl of Sandwich, and so he can prevent someone from being eaten yeah. by giving them these I was, well, sandwiches. I was what do you think of those? <laughs> yeah. This, okay, not only are they amazingly this, thick, this but this is awesome. This is one of the best tokens I've ever seen in any game ever. Yeah, a giant sandwich. <laughs> I guess. just ate, and I'm still, I'm now hungry again. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's great. So, so uh, he does this to appease someone so they don't eat him? Appease the werewolf. Appease yeah, the werewolf. You can, a werewolf can uh, survive a night on a roast beef sandwich and avoid a villager. So. <laughs> That's fantastic. What about these keys over here? Uh, so these are just different components that the the witch and the sorceress are going to be able to use, okay. um, and it just depends. Sometimes things, everything will come out. In other games, certain things won't come out. So we're going to offer a refill for thirty dollars. You're going to oh. get another diary and another copy of the family cards, but all the other components will be reusable. Oh, that's so cool. you'll be able to go through it again. And one of the best parts is you can go through it with the same group of people a second time. 
and it will be completely different because who, who, who fulfills their winning conditions directly affects every sequential game. So I assume this plays like a regular version of Ultimate Werewolf? I mean, is it the same? That's so what the games will feel like, but the thing is, every game, depending on who wins, something is very heavily impacted. Maybe there's a new role that gets introduced into the village. Maybe a new person comes to the village. There's a new role that may not come out depending on if the werewolves or the villagers win. So ooh, ooh. it kind of has a very big ripple effect that things that happen in the first couple of games will still have effects that will be taking place in those last couple of games. So how long did, would it take to play through a full storyline? If you play, sat down and played through the whole thing all at once, I would say probably about 16 hours. Okay. But it does a really cool thing. So this is one of the new things we're doing uh, with a legacy game. Is so every three games is called a chapter. And so in between chapters, you're going to be able to add or remove players without significantly affecting gameplay. Oh, neat. Yeah, so if you, uh, if you add or remove players, as long as, you, uh, as long as you still have the minimum player count, you can add or remove players. So if you have friends that, I mean, we all have the friends who have a life event when you're in the middle of a legacy game, and you're like, oh, great. Now it's going to be three weeks. And mm -hmm. um, so you can add and remove people, and it's just it's so nice to be able to do that because that's the biggest challenge with legacy. And uh, I know now you got the awesome diary with all the stickers. Uh, now, is this legacy game mostly like sticker and changing the rule and and you know um, additions to the play cards? Is it mostly driven by the stickers, or are there other things like ripping up cards, adding cards, are there packets that will be open, other stuff too? Nope. So it's all going to be kind of diary and sticker driven. You're okay. not going to destroy anything. We okay. made sure to make our components really high quality. We want to make sure they're going to last. That's why <laughs> you said they're a little thicker. Yeah. yeah we want to make sure these things are going to last, and you guys can play this game many, many times, and it still hold up. Cool. Cool, good. So it doesn't really hit that that dead end that some legacy ca games can, in mm -hmm. a way. All right. And the idea of being able to bring people in and out, I know that's a lot of problems with uh, some groups I have that play legacy style games. It's like, well, great. How am I going to get the same group of people to play mm -hmm. over a course of 16 hours, over many days? Mm -hmm. So instead, you just, hey, let's just commit to play three chapters, and then we can switch people in and out as needed after that. Yeah, and it's super fun because um, it keeps everybody who's playing is enjoying it, and yes. they're active in it. Speaking of which, with swapping out people in the chapters, I mean, you know, and it's werewolf, so uh, I imagine you know werewolf usually pl can play a larger crowd. So what, what's you know what player count can this can this take? All right, so this can play nine to sixteen people, um, which would be eight people in a moderator or fifteen people in a moderator. Wow. Okay. So even with all of the changing rule set and everything that's going to be evolving, it still can support the larger mm -hmm. larger group. Which is really good because you guys have seen. I mean, you guys, I'm sure you've seen here even yesterday, last night, the people playing until two or three in the morning. These circles of people playing werewolf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be the next thing they're doing. So that is so cool. Yeah, and then they'll they'll just sit like you said, get a big group of people like that, sit there, play through a couple chapters. But after the con, whoever owns the game can take it home and just pick up from the next chapter. Exactly. Or if you guys want to split it up between three days of the convention, you could play chapters every time and work your way through it at a convention, which I imagine will happen more often than not. I, I'm sure it will. And uh, just another question, does the same person have to be the moderator throughout mm. the game? So it is very, very uh, beneficial to have the same person be the moderator for the whole game, okay. just because he has all the information and won't have oh, to go back and yes. look at things that have happened. Okay. He knows everything up to the point. Um, technically, he doesn't have to be. But the person who is would want to go back and review everything to be caught up to what's right. happened in this village because they don't know. That's so true, it almost sounds like maybe the person who <laughs> owns the game will be taken home is probably the person that might be should be the moderator. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Unless they have a friend who is super charismatic and they'd prefer them to be the moderator, they can totally pass the buck. Yeah, you do, usually do pretty good on your charisma roles. That's true. I was going to say, I have absolutely no charismatic friends. There you go. <laughs> so, no, this is beautiful and gorgeous. And just the, the fact that you're, you're taking this you know, party game and f found a way to make it story-driven and evolve and unique. Oh, I'm so excited for this. When is this going to be something I can get in my grubby little claws? You can get it in your grubby little claws at Gen Con this year. Yeah, this is going to be a Gen Con release. So it's, it's come, Gen Con's coming up fast. Yep, yep. And how much is this going to be? It's going to be sixty dollars. And the refill is thirty. Yep, it's only thirty. And that's a brand new book. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Wow. Another one of these beautiful things. Wow. Yeah. So sixty bucks MSRP. It will be thirty for the refills. Available at Gen Con, and I guess probably online and in local stores. Oh yeah, also. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always pre-order from our website. We're still taking pre-orders, even though it is coming out soon. So if you're interested, you can totally go on there and pick it out. Awesome. All right. That is fantastic, Matt. Thank you for sharing this werewolf game from Bezier with us. But don't go anywhere yet. No. Oh, all right. Yes, because we want you to stick around because we came up with a game for, for you. you. All right. For me. Yes. All right. So here's what we're okay. doing. Here's what we do with some of the publishers. Uh, 
what we're going to do is we're going to read off, uh, we're going to have like a quiz of about 10, I believe, questions, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, have you playing for a viewer in the audience. So oh, if, you, nice. if you get the majority of these questions right, you will win a viewer from the audience, a $25 gift certificate to Cool Stuff Inc. Oh, awesome. Okay. I hope I win for you, whoever yes. you are. <laughs> and so do they, I bet. <laughs> and, and how do those people enter? Yes, you'll see in the upper <coughs> right corner of your screen, I believe, a hashtag DTCQA, which is the has hashtag we've been using all week for questions and answers. All you got to do to enter this contest is send a tweet that includes that hashtag, ask a question of Marty, ask a question of me, ask a question about the game, or ask a question about whatever you want. And once you make that tweet, you'll be entered in because we're going to randomly draw from anyone who's tweeted with that hashtag today to be in the drawing. If you get a majority of these right. If. If. All, right. I, All right, I will do my best. All right. I will do so my best. So you said, well, there are 10, right? There are 10. You have you five. You got to get six. Okay. You guys get now. I have a list. Okay. Marty, since uh, Bezier's uh, Werewolf Legacy, Marty has a list of five different famous werewolves for you to identify. Okay. Pictures. And I will have a list of five different famous curves for you to identify. Bezier, Bezier curves. curves. Ah, all, right, all, right. all right. All right. All right. And we'll just alternate back and forth. Yes. And, and we'll Marty, see, how will you do? Why don't you start? I'm more confident on this side than okay. I am on this side. <laughs> and uh, you that uh, are out there can play along. I'm going to put the iPad in the middle of the table. We'll switch the camera so that uh, you can see it. So here we go. You ready? All right. I'm you ready should be able to see this one I put down. Here we go. All right. Here's the first you... one of 10. Who is this famous werewolf? And feel free to talk through it. Uh, isn't that Teen Wolf? <gasps> You got See, it right off the bat. Right off the bat. I'm going to slide this down and we'll let uh, you slide in here all right, beside. All right. Okay. Well, I'm also uh, starting. Here is your first famous curve. It's animated, too. I know. That's great. <laughs> I spared no expense. I know. You guys are amazing, but I'm going to yeah. tell you. I don't know. Okay. Now, think of, this is the first question, so it might be a bit of a softball. Can mm -hmm. you think of any type of famous curve? That I might have a Bezier curve. It is a Bezier oh, curve. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> two for two so far. All right. My iPad went to sleep. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Not the entire universe knows your code. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but that one. And if you double oh, that's tap, a frightening werewolf. If you double tap, it might zoom in a little bit. Or or go from white to black. <laughs> Maybe a. Uh, this? Should we give a hint? It's a, it's a famous, it's a famous werewolf from a movie. Yes, from a movie. I want to say Werewolves of London, but this I just... Oh my gosh, without okay. even a hint! It's a werewolf no, of yeah, London. he's super scary, so that was, yes. my, that was yeah. my one thing. That was a London. scary werewolf I, movie to me. So that's, very that's three. I'm oh my gosh, yeah, here. you are three. Okay, here we go. This next one. Here's your next famous type of curve. Hopefully this will... Do you remember in school... People were lots of times graded on that type of curve. Yeah. Hopefully it'll ring something in your memory. I'm telling you, I'm coming up blank on these curve things. Mm. That's all right. You're doing well on the others. You are doing well. So nothing's uh, not ringing a bell? No. High school math's escaping me. OK. You have to call it that. It's a bell curve. It's a bell curve. Bell okay. curve. All right. Sometimes you hear people grading on a bell curve. OK, here we go. Our next werewolf. Oh. And, the, the, and I'm gonna, uh, if you don't get this one, I'm going to be extremely <laughs> upset because this is from one of my favorite shows yeah. of all time. Yeah, the character or the show it's from. Any one of those will. It is my favorite show, television show of all time. I don't know. Oh my. I know, no, I'm so okay. sorry. It was a movie. That became a television show, and the television show actually became a comic book. Became a comic book, <laughs> and became a, uh, a board game. Le board game and yeah. a legendary card game My as well. Jack last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not coming to you. So it comes no. right back. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, That's Ted's Oz gonna kill me from Buffy the That's Vampire Slayer. That's one of Ted's favorite shows too. Oh, then we should have had Ted. Yeah, I know. He would have. <laughs> he he would have got ten for ten. <laughs> All right. Here is. Hey, gotta get three more. Yes. No pressure here. Uh, I'm also keeping score over here. Okay. So, all right. Here is a, a famous uh, curve. Those are called switchbacks, typically. They are, but this is a certain location that is known for a reason. Is, is it too glary there? Oh, I can see it. I all just right. am not sure. 
Right. It's in California. Okay. I'll take either the, lo <laughs> the name of the location or the reason why it's famous. Or maybe the city it's in. San Diego? I mean, I would guess a California city, but I don't know. All right. This, this is... Uh, this is Lombard Street. Lombard Street in San Francisco. It is the curviest road in the world. Yep. Oh, okay. And I've actually been on that street. Did you drive it? I did not because it was freaking <laughs> me out. I, <laughs> I was going to say. It. I walked it down. But that, that's, it's really, it is tight. Seeing people trying to maneuver down through there is pretty crazy. I can't imagine. All right, so how many do we have left here? Okay, uh, that was my third one. So we have four left. I've nailed three and missed three. Whew. Okay. Four so left. You only need three two more. Yeah. We, whatever. I can't count. Oh, a serious black. Oh, oh not serious black. Um, Lupin. Yes. 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 My yes. My wife Harry would, Potter. Yeah, my Harry wife Potter. would kill me if I missed that one. All, All right. right. Nice job. All right. Nice oh, yeah. job. Mine are out of order, so I gotta make sure I uh, have this right. All right. You got this, Matt. I, okay. I, count, I, they're counting on you, Matt. Okay. So this is a baseball player known for his famous curveball. Oh, okay. Well, you've gone into a genre that <laughs> oh, no. I don't have any. <laughs> okay. This Marty's the one that told me about this. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any baseball players that you actually would recognize the name of? Favorites. <laughs> okay. like top of the list. Oh, that's yeah, like, yeah. You're at the same level yeah, I am. That's okay. it. That's okay. all I got. Marty, do you have a hint that you could give us? No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there, there's nothing that's going to help right. here. Babe uh, Ruth from um, the 60s, LA Dodger. Uh, he, I think he's, he, maybe he's he, Jewish. He, he was mentioned Jewish on name. Seinfeld, wasn't he? Was he mentioned on a Seinfeld episode? I can't remember. I think that's where I heard his name. Anyway, it is Sandy Koufax uh, oh. from, from baseball. <laughs> <laughs> from the baseball. From the baseball. From the baseball. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is the last werewolf. Okay, that one's from Twilight. Yes. yes. I don't. I know his first name's Taylor because he dated Taylor Swift, but I don't uh, know anything else. But you don't know the about character it. name. Works for me. You That's what, at least you recognized it. So, yeah. Twi yeah. which one is it? Is it, it Jacob? Jacob. It, Jacob. It's Jacob. Yeah. I, I never saw. I can't keep the two. I wasn't team anybody. <laughs> And kudos to you, Marty, for finding a picture of Jacob with his shirt on. Yeah! Wow, oh. that alone. I'm applauding that. I applaud that. So you got what, five? He's got five. This is it. So here's the thing. It You've got to get this one. Oh, You've got to no. get this You've one. You've got to get this okay. one. And this will be a famous curve, all right, or someone related to famous curves. There, there is your picture. Can you identify this person associated with famous curves? He's still, is he still alive? I don't know. Okay. Uh, just give it some time, talk it through, think about weird. Tate Osbach was influenced by this person. Yes. No time limit. I don't know. He, he has, I mean, he, he Tate, created something he in mathematics. He looks a little like Rodney Dangerfield. But. <laughs> well, he gets respect though, because <laughs> his, his name, he's even like, a, his namesake has been used even in the gaming industry. Right. Ted Osbeck's a big fan yeah. of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's so much so yeah. that Ted might even, like, give him tribute somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, through yeah. some. Then did you know that the Bezier curve is a mathematical formula yeah. that actually, like, you know, Copernicus with a, a calculus and, and all the other stuff, uh, the Bezier curves were actually were created by a specific guy yeah. who figured out the specific mathematical yeah. formula to make them work? Somebody. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't, oh. I feel awful now for this viewer because I don't know this guy's name, but Ted does talk about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, so, Ted would even put his name on a box. Yeah, that's right. Or his business Ted, card. Ted might even have named a company after him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is his name Bezier? Yeah! Yes! 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 We just had to stretch. We had to stretch, but we got there. Yes, that is Pierre Bezier, the inventor of the Bezier curve. Okay, so that is the actual That's guy. That's the actual guy. That's awesome. <laughs> I knew we should Thank have you guys for squeezing that into out of me. I really Ted wanted really the viewer. Liked him. I really yeah, wanted that viewer to win. Name something after him. <laughs> like the company you work for. <laughs> what does it say on your shirt? <laughs> Read your shirt. Is is he a werewolf? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's in Twilight, right? <laughs> right. Oh. 
Well, excellent. Oh, yep, you won. So what we're going to do is... Uh, just by the skin of my teeth. Just by the skin of your teeth. But you know, a win's a win. Yeah. That's right. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So what we're going to do is we are at the... Uh, after our broadcast today, we are going to uh, pull one more name from someone who's used this hashtag. We're going to pull them all out of the random hat, and they will win a $25 gift certificate from Cool Stuff, Inc. And I will be contacting the winner by a Twitter direct message sometime within you know the next 24 hours for this drawing. So keep an eye out on your Twitter DMs. Also... Keep an eye out on this channel because we're going to take like a little five minute break and we're going to set up for our next guest and then we will be right back. <laughs> 